So, since we're on a binge right now with auto battle only challenges, let's keep the train going. However, it wasn't that long ago that we also tried a Cecil only run for Final Fantasy IV, which actually ended in failure. Now, Cecil has access to healing, so I'll be curious to see how this goes when we trade healing for some extra characters. Will we finally beat a Final Fantasy IV challenge? Let's find out, but first, I'm going to tell you all about our merch giveaway. One lucky commenter on this video is going to win a lovely OnlyFans t-shirt. All you have to do is be a subscriber to the channel and drop a comment and we'll pick somebody at random. Winner will be announced in the next video. Just make sure you have your contact email up to date on your YouTube channel homepage so I can contact you. Also, like the video as well. It gives me a little bulge when I see the number go up. Okay, so first we need some rules. Of course, we're going to follow our previously set rules. Once a battle starts, I must turn auto battle on and leave it on. This means all characters will default to the attack command and only use that. It also means I can't use items, I can't defend, and I can't flee. All I can do in battle is attack, as if I'm berserked. Now, Cecil starts off by murdering a bunch of innocent people and destroying their homes. We're the good guy, I promise. Our king will absolutely reimburse everybody for their losses. So, for now, let's head back to the castle and get in trouble for angering our clearly nice guy king. Look, I don't like him, okay? So, we're gonna steal everything in his castle. Guys, He's a king after all. He can replace a few potions. Also, we're going to steal from the townsfolk as well and grab all the items there we can. Now, Cecil and Kane are on a new mission to slay Bahamut. Okay, maybe not Bahamut, but it's still a dragon. And the very first boss gives us a huge headache. Miss Dragon has 570 HP. I clearly don't do anywhere near that. However, the boss has a mist form and uses it after just a few attacks. Now, when it's in this form, it will always evade attacks. And it even counters me with AoE damage, hitting each character for about 30 points. It does eventually retake its normal dragon form, allowing me to hit it, but that's after it gets me down to red HP. Kane is down to just 13, and while his normal attacks deal absolutely nothing, I still can't kill him before he enters the mist form again and counters me to death. Okay, no problem. We just need a tiny bit more health and a little bit more damage. We're currently level 11, so let's hit level 15 and try again. Now, this attempt starts off with us doing a nice 300 or so damage to him before he goes immune. Then of course, he deals more than half my health and damage with counters before he returns back to his normal form. So, we start attacking away and manage to down it one turn before he goes back into his mist form. Fun fact, if we didn't kill him there, I'd have died to counters again. Afterwards, we kinda accidentally destroy another town yeah, I don't think the king is going to pay the repair fees for this place, but you know who will? Our sponsor! Me! Did you know that you can support the channel over on Ko-Fi right now? Not only do you get insanely awesome benefits like early access to videos and discounted merch, but you are also helping the future of this channel. Once we can hire Daph full-time, which is the first goal we have on there, then you guys will get not only the weekly challenge video, but you will also get two brand new weekly series. So we'll go from one video every Friday to one video every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We just have to hit the first goal for that to happen. And as a benefit, you can support as much or as little as you want on Ko-Fi. It's entirely up to you. Learn more down below at the link in the description. Okay. So what's better than putting a sponsor segment right after we destroy a town? Simple. We please them even more by immediately attacking a child, 
getting killed by said child, although technically Kane survived, and then kidnapping the child right after their ad read. All because we caused the death of her mother and everybody else she knows and loves. It's okay though, we're helping her, I promise. So, now let's head to Kaipo for a little rest where some soldiers find us and we have to fight our way through to protect our little princess summoner. At this point as well, Stockholm Syndrome is kicking in and she starts to like us a little more. So, it's time to go throw her to some tentacles in the subterranean lake. Also, I buy tons of healing items here and put the little child soldier on the front lines. She'll take more damage, but she'll also deal more damage. But make no mistake, Rydia is going to be absolutely useless this run to the point I think Edward might even be better than her. But then I go to the weapon shop and realize I'm an idiot. I buy her a bow and put her in the back row. Then in the armor shop, we run into our good friend Naming Way, who reveals the secret of the universe to us. Cecil is actually the almighty Kofi returning for another adventure, and Rydia is the lovely Twitch. They lost their friends Twitter and Discord though during the travel to a new world, but I'm sure we'll find them later. And so I guess this is the adventures of Kofi and friends again. For like, what, the sixth time now? No, oh, well, time for the lake. On the way though, I bump into some random old guy who reminds me I never actually went and saw that Rosa was in Kaipo. Whoops. Okay, time to backtrack, find Rosa passed out, and now the old guy becomes my friend. But he's another damn mage. AKA, he's useless for me. Now, the next boss is kind of equally as useless though. Octo Mammoth really doesn't have anything special of note, and since Cecil's Shadow Blade and Hades equipment are located right before the boss, this one is kind of impossible to lose unless you go out of your way to do so. But after a little back and forth, we take him down. Now we get to ransack Damekian Castle. Look, they're all dead, they don't need this stuff anymore, especially Tala's daughter, who is dead. Also, look, this game has more deaths than an execution yard, okay? Get used to it. But hey, we get a new vehicle, the Hovercraft, and this lets us float over the ocean as long as there's giant, big, pointy rocks sticking out. And this lets us get to the Antlion Cave where we can get the Sand Ruby to save Rosa. The only problem? It's guarded by the Antlion. But, well, this fight is probably the easiest fight in the whole game. Its normal attack deals one damage, and while it does have counters, it doesn't really do much with that either. So we just beat him down. Now let's go back to Kaipo, save Rosa, and watch our spoony bar trip on LSD, and head out to Fabool, where we have some real fun by traumatizing a child and peer pressuring her into using fire magic after her entire life was ruined by fire. It's okay though, she's a child and super gullible, so all we have to do is tell her to be brave. Not sure why that's the only ice on this cliff though, or why we couldn't just, you know, climb around it, but while well, gaming logic. So on we go to the Mother Bomb boss and a new character, Yang. Yang is also a melee fighter, which means I finally have somebody else now that actually does more damage than just banging a toe on a corner unit. Now, the Mother Bomb deals about 80 damage per hit which to Cecil isn't much, but to the other characters is typically about one third of their HP. And Rydia is the unfortunate victim here and gets dropped to red health pretty fast. From that point, Yang takes a hit too, but eventually the bomb upgrades to her big version and blows all over me, resulting in Rosa being pretty much one hit away from death. Rydia does die and the others are mostly okay. Now we just have to deal with six baby bombs. And while I do take them out pretty quickly, I do also lose Rosa as well, which means no EXP for her. But now it's time to save a castle. 
by some trash mobs, including the Dragoon Kane, who turned a traitor, and sadly, there's no edges nearby for him to jump off of. But it's also an unwinnable fight. Oh, and Rosa gets kidnapped. So anyway, buy some new gear for Cecil, watch a king die again, and get a new sword for Cecil, and then make way to Mercedia. On the way though, that naughty little lolicon Leviathan takes a fancy to Rydia and decides to attack our boat. We survive, but we're stranded now. Thankfully, we're stranded right next to Mercedia, and now it's time to become a good guy. I mean a paladin. We also have two new mages join us in the form of Palom and Poram. We also buy some new gear for them, but also the light gear ready for Paladin Cecil, since all our current gear is about to become unusable. And then it's off to Mount Hobbs, where we somehow find Tala. Now, I have absolutely no idea how we got here, or how we got here so damn fast, but anyway, he rejoins the party. And right afterwards, we have a boss fight with Skarmillion. Now, anybody who watched my Cecil only run knows how much of a nightmare this boss can be since it comes with four Skullnant trash mobs. And sadly, Cecil only does one damage to them because they are classed as undead. Thankfully though, we have a workaround this time. Palom and Param are both equipped with crossbows and holy arrows. And this absolutely destroys the trash, which leaves us with just Scar to deal with. And thankfully, Cecil does full damage to him, because he's not classed as undead in this fight. So, the twins go back to being useless meat shields. Tala, well, he's just useless all around. At first, I have no worries because of how low the damage is coming in. But then, I start to worry more and more as time goes on, because the thunder spam from Scar is really starting to hurt. Palom ends up dying. Param gets taken down all the way to just 4 HP. Tala is just sitting, chilling at 323, being useless as both a damage dealer and a meat shield. And Cecil is really getting worked down all the way to just 93 HP. If he dies, I'm screwed because he's my main damage dealer this fight. But thankfully, before Scar can finish me off, I managed to etch out the win. So now it's time to heal up and proceed on where we get instantly back attacked by Scar for round two. I did also forget to swap the party around, so Cecil was front row for the fight, but it honestly doesn't matter much for me. Cecil still does about 100 damage, but now Scar is classed as an undead type mob, which means the twins absolutely demolish him, doing anywhere from 200 to 500 damage he hit. And while they do die very, very quickly, they did their job in taking out a huge chunk of life from Scar. And then one final crit from Kofi ends the fight. And now I get to fight myself and we die. This is kind of a trick fight in order to win. You see, we need to not attack since a paladin would sheath his sword and be a good guy in general. Well, I show off what happens when you leave auto battle on and now we have a decision. If I turn auto battle off here and still not make an action, I'm technically not doing anything and so technically not breaking the rules, right? Well, you can be the judge on this one. But now though, I'm going to turn it off and just not do anything to get past this little tutorial slash floor fight and then move on. But as I say, if you think this counts as a challenge fail, then by all means, let me know in the comments. And so with that, we have now become a paladin. Equip Cecil, gain a few levels here since everything is undead, and Cecil's new light weapon, along with the twins' holy arrows, make this place heaven on earth for some quick levels. And now, we can head back to Baron, and find our lovely brainwashed Yang chilling in a bar. The secret here though is, he's not really brainwashed, he just wants to go down to the bar with some friends for a few drinks, but his wife wouldn't let him, so he had to fake this whole thing. And since we're his bros, we of course have to play along and give him a black eye just for show. Sadly, that's not how things went at all. <laughs> Before we fight Yang, we have to fight two guards. And what's really annoying is that they inflict mini. 
This reduces a character's damage to one and even reduces my defense down to just one as well, making me take insanely huge damage from everything. What doesn't help is Cecil likes to defend and cover the other party members. I normally wouldn't mind this, but when he's taking double damage, I really do have a problem with it. And while they do keep casting mini, reverting characters to their normal size, before shrinking them back down again, they hit Cecil with mini early on, and then basically never target him again. And when they do target him, it freaking misses, meaning I'm still stuck doing basically no damage. Tala and Palom end up dying, and Cecil is super close to dying as well, with less than 100 HP left, when he finally gets hit with Mini again, making him big, which is great because this lets me kill off the last guard. The downside here is I have two characters left alive. One has no health, and the other is terrible, before being thrown into a fight with Yang and no time to heal. But luckily, this is just a timed fight, and we don't actually need to win, which is great news for us as Cecil does indeed die here, but our lovely little mage manages to hold on just long enough for Yang to wake up and realise he's just murdered his friend, a child, and an old man. Now, on to Baigan in the castle, and thankfully, this is another fight we don't get memed on like we did in the Cecil-only run. We're forced to kill the left arm first due to the way auto battle targets mobs, but that's fine as the left arm is better to be killed anyway. Then we can start attacking Baigan, and I'm sure it comes as absolutely no surprise when you find out Tala and Palom both die in this fight. Like seriously, when was the last boss they even survived? But it's not exactly a big deal since all my damage comes from Cecil and Yang anyway. Now, while Baigan did at least try with hasting himself, it didn't really help his cause as most enemies deal very little damage in FF4 prior to getting the Underworld, which we're actually not that far from, but we have one more big issue coming up with the next boss, Cognazzo. Now, this guy was absolutely horrific to me in my Cecil only run. If we end up having the same memes here, then I'm gonna be mad. First things first though, steal everything from the castle, which we couldn't earlier. Just make sure to have a lightning claw equipped to Yang, so we can at least get some decent elemental damage in. Speed is going to be key in this fight after all. And sadly, the memes return, but in a different way to before. We start off doing good damage, especially Yang. The problem is that once we get him down, he starts to use turtle defense, which massively increases his defense, and he uses an ability called Restore. This is where we get deadlocked. I can't out damage his Restore, and while it takes a very long time, in fact, I don't even know how long I left this attempt going for, maybe Daf could throw up a small picture of the clip length, but essentially what happens here is he very slowly refills his health to the point he can enter his attack phase. He uses an attack and then I instantly push him back into his defense mode. This means that I could spend an hour, two hours or even three hours. Eventually though, he's going to kill me since he can still damage me. It's just extremely slow and I can't heal. But likewise, I can't kill him either. His health restore is just above my damage, and because of the rules of auto battle only, there's not much more I can do at this point since I already have thunder equipment on Yang. This means we have one option and one option only. We need more stats to increase our damage. Thankfully though, we don't have to go anywhere near as nuts as we did when it was Cecil only. Yang is also a superstar when it comes to damage, so a short grind should be all we need to push us past the limit of his healing. The grind is just a little annoying though because the Baron Guards have many. After this, we go and try the boss again, which thankfully goes much better this time around. Our high damage means we don't need to worry about his healing mechanic, and Yang even got a few crits in, really helping to knock his huge HP pool down in quick fashion. 
Afterwards, we have a sad moment where the twins sacrifice their young lives to save mine. Ah, the good old feeling of living longer by giving up the futures of children. So anyway, next we get blackmailed by Kane, who can't take a hint that white mages just don't love dragoons, and so we're forced off to Troy. Buy new equipment that isn't made of metal, including great bows and fire arrows for Cecil and Sid, and off we go to the Magnetic Cave, where as the name implies, we can't do anything with metal. Also, Black Chocobo's first appearance in the franchise. Now, when we get to the Dark Elf, we get absolutely creamed and get a game over. Why? Because I'm an idiot and I forgot to speak to Edward in the Troya castle. So, walk of shame back there, speak to him, and then we come back. Now, anybody remember this fight from my Cecil only run? Well, this time it goes totally different. First, we have the usual insta-wipe for story reasons. Then, using the power of midichlorians, Edward senses we're in danger and plays a tune which somehow stops the elf from controlling the magnetism. Look, magic, okay? Anywho, firstly, I have all my characters compared to Cecil only, which means my damage is of course much higher than it was back then. But not only that, I have four characters alive as well, which also means he has more targets to hit, and even though his dark breath from his snake form is AoE, that's kinda all. Cecil did get picked, but that doesn't really matter as he still deals damage. We didn't see Tornado, but even if we did, it wouldn't be basically an instant run ender like it was previously. So ultimately, we managed to down it. Let's go deliver this Earth Crystal to Kane, and shocked Pikachu face, it was a trap, and we end up captured. Who could have ever predicted the bad guy wouldn't hold up to their end of the deal? So, head through the Tower of Zot to the next boss, the Maga Sisters. And what a fight. So... If you don't know, you're supposed to kill Cindy off first here since she has full life and will revive the other two when they die. The problem here is auto battle only targets the first target in the list. In this case, Mindy. This means whenever I kill Mindy, she just gets revived on Cindy's next turn. All while Reflect is being spammed. I'm being hit with melee attacks and magic spells. Tala dies pretty quickly while the rest slowly get lower and lower and lower on HP. Now thankfully, when I kill Mindy, I do land some hits on Cindy. This means the fight isn't impossible, it's just going to take ages. And while I lost track of how many times I killed Mindy, we do eventually get Cindy killed as well, which means no more reviving. Once Cindy is down, everything is smooth sailing. We just kill Mindy one last time before taking Sandy down, who resorts to just casting Berserk after Cindy dies, but all my characters have Reflect anyway because she kept casting Reflect on Cindy, who already had Reflect. Next up, Tala tries to solo Golbez, who just laughs in his face until he gets a giant space rock dropped on him. Well, we're inside of a building, and yet he still somehow walks it off. Tala dies of old age, Kane seems to be free from mind control, and Kofi gets a lightning blast through the heart. But like a true Saiyan warrior, he comes back even stronger. Then we save Rosa from being sliced in half, Kane watches on in horror as the love of his life embraces another man, before said man takes pity on him and asks him to be a third wheel forever by joining the party. He agrees and joins us along with Rosa. And then we have my worst nightmare, Barbarica. I have been dreading this fight the entire run. Why? Well, watch my Cecil only run for why. So, will I win? Let's find out. Now, some backstory. She summons a whirlwind around her, which impedes attacks other than jump, something we can't use with auto battle. So we have to slowly slug at her with reduced damage. She has tornado, which can drop me to a single digit health. 
a melee attack and she can turn my characters to stone. Now with having five characters each share the damage and take the attacks between them, I managed to live somewhat decently. My damage is low though, so the fight takes a while as I watch Cecil, Yank and Kane each get hit by Tornado and they are my big damage dealers. If they die, I'm in huge trouble. But, well, to save you watching the entire 10 minute fight, let's just cut ahead to where I win. Nobody died and honestly, the fight was pretty boring. It just lasted a while because Barbarica is just such a HP sponge. So yes, jump isn't needed, it just helps. Although now thinking about it, I'm not actually sure what her whirlwind attack does. If anybody knows, then by all means, let me know. And now, let's visit Hal by taking the newly acquired Magma Stone to Agart and throw it in a well. And then we're thrown into a boss battle basically instantly at the Dwarven Castle, Calcabrina. And this fight starts with us against six little dolls. Three of them go down in a single hit and then the surviving three merge. The merge version is extremely dangerous as well. Aside from doing half my health in a single hit, meaning she can basically two-shot me, she also has access to Confuse, which gets landed on Yang. But he, thankfully, hits himself, as Cecil gets hit twice by the melee attacks, dropping him down to just 100 health before we finish the fight off. But then we get thrown right into another fight right after this with Golbez. And this fight starts off as a semi-storyline fight where we can't actually do anything. Golbez then summons his Shadow Dragon, which kills off Rosa, Kane, and Yang, leaving just my 100 HP Cecil alive before Rydia comes and saves the day by nuking the Shadow Dragon. The downside here is I'm screwed. I have a 100 HP Cecil and Rydia to kill the boss with melee attacks. I land a few hits with Cecil before he gets taken out. And then Rydia starts to get blasted with magic. But who would have thought the weakest melee attacker in my party actually manages to get the kill on Golbez? I for sure thought this was a 100% game over, but we looked out and I'll take that win. And, uh, oh, hey, Rydia is back and she's now a fully grown adult for the simpers out there, not wanting it to be thrown onto a list. Shame Golbez stole the crystal, though, with his mighty floating ghost hand. Well, since he stole one crystal from me, we're gonna go steal six from him. So it's off to the Tower of Babel we go, where we get face to face with the Doctor and Barnabas. Honestly, straightforward, super easy fight. Barnabas does a little under half my health per hit, but he only hits me once. Then the Doctor merges with Barnabas to create Barnabas Z. Pretty much identical situation here though, and then we have the third form in this Hojo wannabe, but he only really uses sleep gas here. And while well, Yang is just stupidly overpowered, dealing 4,500 damage with a crit for a nice quick win. I guess that's why he dies by taking an explosion to the face. Now, it's just a case of escaping Babel and then escaping Hal back to the surface where Sid blows himself up to close the entranceway to Hal. There's absolutely no way he survives actually blowing himself up, right? Right? Well, next we install a hook on our airship and head over to the cave of Eblen to get back inside the tower once again. We need to avenge everybody who has died so far. So now it's a matter of revenge. On the way, we also run into Naruto who gets slaughtered by Rubiconte. And then of course we decide to help him. And since we have two nice babes with us, he decides to join our party. In the tower, we fight Edgy's parents, who the old doctor turned into chimeras. Why does this scene remind me of a certain little girl and her pet dog? Okay, too soon. I'm sorry. I know we all love Nina. Now, this is a fight where we can't win. We can keep spamming attacks, but we just have to wait for it to end normally. After that, though, we have Rubiconte, and he counters every hit with an AoE fire attack, which absolutely murders Edge and Kane. 
Vidya dies slowly after that, and while Cecil is doing insanely good damage with the Ice Sword, he sadly gets taken out by Inferno, dealing over 1,100 damage to me, before Rosa gets killed off as well. The sad thing is, I think if Inferno hit Rosa instead, I could have won this. So let's try a few more times and see what happens. Second attempt goes pretty much the same way. The third attempt, however, I mix things up. I equip the girls with ice arrows, which means they now deal a solid 1000 damage per hit, which is crazy good. And I gave Kane the ice lance, who now does less damage for some reason. And even with great RNG on Ruby's attacks and his targets, I'm afraid even this didn't actually kill him. Ruby has 34,000 HP. So I think it's time for a small grind for a few more levels to see if the little extra damage and HP makes the difference. Since equipment wise, we're pretty much set up the best we can be right now. And after a little grind that goes super fast, we still get creamed by him. And since Inferno is dealing even more damage now, I'm starting to think maybe it's gravity based. I might actually look that up later actually. Next attempt was also a fail. What's annoying is I'd have won this fight basically every time if it wasn't for his massive increase in defense when he hides inside his cloak. But this just means, yay, we need more stats. So time for another grind because of course. And you are absolutely not going to believe what happens when we refight him. So firstly, we start slugging away as you can of course imagine. Him slowly working me down and killing Kane and Edge. I keep chipping away until it's just Cecil and Rosa left alive. And then he breaks out Inferno on Rosa, killing her. So Cecil can survive, we get a hit in, get countered with fire, get another hit in, and while I'm literally one hit away from another game over, he wastes his turn swapping over to his out of cloak form, where I get one more hit in for the kill. The relief I have right now is unreal especially with just how low my hp is right now with cecil and now i'm seriously scared for zeramus i'm really starting to think this run is not going to be possible with how much we just struggled on rubiconte i really have no idea how things are gonna go but let's continue on and see where we end up and well as it turns out back in hell but this time with a new airship at least so there is that now we head back to the dwarven kingdom take a child's necklace and then go find sid asleep in a bed seriously i don't care if there's magic in this world a human doesn't survive being a freaking human bomb but at least he gets to help upgrade our ship. So now we can fly over lava. So let's go straight to the sealed cave after refilling our items because it's time to commit a meme worthy moment. At least until I realized I screwed up and I went to the sylvan cave, not the sealed cave. Look, these things happen, okay? Anywho, we advance through until we get to the secret room with six treasure chests. The bottom middle one has the Avenger weapon. It has good attack and auto inflicts Berserk, which of course increases the damage we deal in exchange for not being able to control our characters. Well, we're using auto battle, so makes no difference to us, it's just a bonus. The problem, it's a monster in a box with four Marlboros. And while I get hit with Bad Ref twice at the very start, basically ruining Rydia and Edgy's performance all fight, I thankfully don't see it again the rest of the fight, allowing me to slowly take them down. And with this, now we can go back to the sealed cave and do that to advance on. We grab the dark crystal, which triggers a trap, so we get attacked by Demon Wall, but this guy is infinitely easier than his FF7 counterpart. So easy, in fact, I actually have nothing to really say about it. It died in just a few turns and didn't do anything to me. But now shit hits the fan and the creators of the game took some LSD because now we get to fly to the moon on a giant space whale. Because Kane betrayed us again and gave Golbez the last crystal so Babel can reach the moon. Then we casually find out Cecil is an alien and we even recruit another alien, Busoya. 
Oh, and he's going to be pretty much useless. He's a strong mage, but that's all. So at this point, I feel it would be amazing to go kill Bahamut for giggles. Sadly, we can't. I mean, technically we can get to him, but currently with my current stats and equipment, I really don't think I can pull off a win. But let's go see. At the very least, we can also get the Genji gear for Cecil inside there. And I was right. Sadly, we can't even get past the Behemoth currently, let alone fight Bahamut. It's okay though, we can come back later with better gear. So let's head back to Earth where we find a giant robot just casually nuking everything. We do get some help to stop it though in the form of all our friends and lost allies. Including ones who were supposed to be incurably dead. Now in the tower we need to fight the four elemental lords all over again. Scomangalion, Cognazzo, Barbarica and Rubiconte all in the form of the Elemental Lord. And we have a huge problem. Rosa, Edge, and Rydia are all doing one damage per hit, which I have no idea why. They don't have any elements on their attacks. So the only thing I can think of is the fact they're using ranged weapons. Fusoya dies pretty quickly and becomes a typical household rogue, while Cecil is doing all the heavy lifting. Sadly though, the Elemental Lord is hitting pretty hard with normal attacks, and once he turns into Cognazzo, those hard hitting attacks become AoE, and I eventually die a painful death. So, attempt 2, I swap Edgy's Moonring Blade to an Ashra so his weapons are melee, and try again. And this time things go a little better for me. I get through Scarm and Galleon faster than before, but still ultimately wipe out on Cognazzo. This boss is going to be a huge headache. I can see it coming because we're not even getting halfway through the fight. Well, let's grind. At least I have a naming way shop right next to the save point so I can buy healing items. Or at least that was the plan until the very first fight. I get stuck against a mech dragon and well, I mean, just look at how that goes. Anywho. After a grind where I'm forced to save after every single fight because of these damn dragons, we try again and I forget to change gear so we're back to Kofi being the only real damage dealer and shocker, we died to Cognazzo again. So let's change gear and go again. But it was another rip. Now I'm legit getting concerned. We have basically the best equipment we can have here, minus one or two pieces, but that wouldn't make up the difference for us, and we're already mid-60s for levels. I am now seriously actually thinking we're not going to be able to get past the Elemental Lord using only Auto Battle, which is both funny, sad, and slightly rage-inducing given just how close we are to the end. Like, this is the freaking second to last dungeon in the game. We're so close but i just cannot get this boss down so time to break out all the stops i reload an older save to go and get the rat's tail from lander summons and trade it for an adamantite and then get the excalibur then grind up to level 70 slightly higher than i was before so now i have excalibur and i'm slightly higher leveled so let's try this again and i die What's really annoying though is Excalibur is doing even less damage for me, which I can't understand. It's not like it's elemental or anything, I know I lose Berserk, but Excalibur has so much more power that I honestly can't see how it's doing one third of the damage. Well, let's have a equipment swap over now. I give Cecil the Avenger back, I take bows off the girls so they do more than one damage, and since Rydia can equip the Mage Masher, I put her in the front row. Things start well, we get through Scarm and Galleon really fast, Cognazzo also finally goes down, so we end up on Barbarica, who starts to stone at Kofi, which isn't nice, but not too terrible. Edge ends up dying, which is a huge kick in the teeth since he's my second highest damage dealer, but then I get devastated by Maelstrom, an AoE attack which reduces everybody's HP to single digits. And while I do eventually get through Barbarica just after that, Rubicante comes in with an AoE Fire finishing me off. At this point, we have the absolute best equipment we can have. I can't set up any buffs because of the auto battle only rule, so this means the absolute only thing left for us to do now is to level up even more. We need to absolutely nuke the Barbarica phase, as if Maelstrom comes out, that is 100% a guaranteed wipe to Rubicante. 
So, I get my characters to the upper 70s now, with Cecil being 81. This is about 10 extra levels, and try again. This time, we get through Scar pretty quick and easily. Cognazzo was really looking like I could do it without even seeing Tidal Wave, but then he gets it in a few hits before he dies. Rydia does end up dying as well, sadly, but now it's a moment of truth. Barbarica. If we see Maelstrom, we lose. If we don't see it, uh, we have a chance. Fusoya gets hit by melee, so does Rosa, and everybody else, while I'm still slipping damage in. I'm legit just staring a hole in the screen right now, not even blinking, just hoping we don't see it. And then, it happens. We see the phase change. We move on to Rubiconte with Rydia dead and everybody else alive and mostly healthy. Now, the only thing we have to worry about is Inferno. This can and will murder us. If he hits Cecil or Edge, we lose a huge chunk of our damage, and that becomes a pretty surefire loss. Not gonna lie, this is a nail biter. I just want the win so we can move on. But with an auto battle only challenge, all we can really do is just wait and see. And then it happens. It dies. We did it. We killed the Elemental Lord. I never expected anywhere near this amount of trouble on a boss before Zeramus. And yet here we are. But he's dead, which means we can carry on right to the next boss. Well, right after saving anyway. And then if we get past this next boss, we can get to the Lunar Subterrain, which has even more better gear for me. I might even try for the Adamant Armor, but I'm pretty sure that wouldn't go well. But while it's time to cry again, the next boss is the CPU, and this fight sucks for this rule set. You see, there are three mobs. The CPU, the attack node, and the defense node. Normally, you would kill the defense node and then the CPU itself. Why? While the attack node is useless and does basically nothing, the defense node restores the CPU by 3,000 health each turn, and when both nodes die, the CPU starts attacking with an attack called Object 199 twice, which deals an insane 9,999 damage, aka it's a 100% kill attack on two characters. Not only that, but he can also revive the nodes. Now, the nodes themselves have just 3,000 HP, so it can be pretty easy to take down. The CPU, on the other hand, has 30,000 HP, which is a lot harder. I think it's technically possible. We just need the CPU to kill Fusoya and one of the girls first. Get a bunch of damage in, and then ideally, Cecil will stay alive till the end, while we manage to one-shot the defense node after it's revived. That is the ideal plan anyway, so let's try a couple more times. And the second attempt ends the same way. So does the third, and for the fourth attempt, I throw on the Excalibur, again hoping it does more damage than the Avenger for me, which it does, but of course, the CPU still kills Edge first. I really do think this can be done, I just need him to kill Fusoya and one of the girls first. That, that's all I need. And then I think we can do it. And honestly, I have no idea what the CPU's problem is. It's just constantly leaving Fusoya alive till the end, and it's driving me mad. In the end, I get sick of it. RNG is quite clearly not on my side, or Fusoya is bribing the boss. One or the other. So now it's time to bite the bullet. I'm going to get the last 20 levels and go all the way to 99. That's the only thing I can do here other than try going for god rolls on RNG after all. So, Cecil is 99, Edge is 99, Rosa is 98, Rydia is 91, and Fusoya is useless. So let's try again. And this time, things go great. In the sense I just wasted a huge bunch of time. The nodes die, and then Rydia and Fusoya die. Finally, Fusoya dies first. Edge and Cecil are really hammering the bosses while doing huge damage. It does restore the nodes, which get swiftly dispatched, 
and then the boss itself dies. And all it took was basically a mix of the best and second best gear in the game and max level. I really don't think we can beat the final boss here. Anywho, Golba shows up and Fusoya does some Jedi mind trick to remove the brainwashing. We find out he's Kofi's brother, yada yada yada. Kane isn't evil anymore and helps us get out. We kick Rosa and Rydia off of the whale so we can go to the moon without them, but they stowed away and now we're back on the moon. Now, with a third melee attacker at long freaking last, we have three characters who should do good damage with auto battle, and all that's left to do is go fight the final boss, which is of course, we're not going to do. Instead, we're gonna go fight Bahamut. Come on, Daph, did you really think I'd forget about this? Also. Guys, if you don't hear from me again, just know Daff escaped her cage and murdered me. Anywho, the behemoth who trounced me before gets absolutely decimated, and so does the one right after it, along with the third and final one. So now it's time for Bahamut himself. At least until I realized I never did Leviathan previously. Okay, time to go murder him first. And of course, we're massively overpowered now compared to Ashura and Leviathan, so they of course go down effortlessly. Ashura does a couple of hundred points of damage to me, and Leviathan hits me with Tidal Wave for around 2000 damage, but that's all. They died in a few turns. And now, back to Bahamut. Oh, and since we have a full party now, our naming way is with the summons, everybody becomes their true selves, as Discord and Twitter rejoin the party. But, FF4 has five characters so i need something else to shill so this time we go with merch because primal merch is hard as fuck and everybody wants it now again bahamut murder time and the weak little snake doesn't even touch me before he dies man bahamut is so freaking weak guys okay so it runs over we just needed to kill bahamut or we're done yeah Okay, fine. I'll go fight the final boss as well. But only because there's a dark Bahamut in there, so we can murder it twice. Which also means that we might as well do all the sealed weapons. The first being Murasame, where we have to fight the White Dragon. And I think the girls at the Weedabix today, because they absolutely ripped the dragon apart. I'm gonna assume it's weak to ranger weapons, because damn. Rosa was hitting for 9,999 damage. I do some flan princess fights, since the first attempt went so well. I decided to just go ahead and do a few more to see if we can get the pink tail to drop. We did five kills and sadly did not get it, so I chose to move on instead. Then we have Dark Bahamut, who once again gets crushed because of course he does. This also rewards us with the Ragnarok, the best weapon in the game. So needless to say, it goes straight onto Cecil. I was expecting a little bit more from Bahamut though, but I guess that's all you can get from an overgrown lizard. Next up is grabbing the Holy Lance, where we need to fight Plague. All this guy does though is cast Doom, and you can see how that went for the poor guy. Next up, we murder the two Lunasaurs, who were guarding two ribbons, which is nice, but damn, just look at the difference with how we're murdering things right now, versus how we were struggling so much less than five minutes ago. Anyway, let's go do the last sealed weapon, the Masamune, which means we need to fight Ogopopo. It's basically an evil leviathan, and he even opens up with two tidal waves dealing over 4,000 damage to me. I got a little worried in case he used it again, but thankfully he chose to just use normal melee attacks for about 500 damage a hit, which didn't kill anybody before we dropped him. And with that, all we have left to do now is the final boss. So let's go. And I just realized I've been saying Zeramus the entire time, but it's actually Zemus. Well, anyway, we watch Golbus and Fusoya murder the main body of Zemus with a nice little double meteor, which I super wish we could use ourselves, but oh well, no magic allowed this run. And I knew I wasn't making up the name Zeramus. Once Zemus dies, he becomes Zeramus, and then he has round two with Golbus and the Carpeef Drug, who this time absolutely got obliterated, and it becomes our turn, but we're kinda dead. Luckily enough, with the power of friendship, we're healed and brought back to life across time and space. The problem though is the run dies here, 
after all the struggles, all the pain, all the grinding, we simply can't progress any further. Why? Because we need to use an item to even damage Zeramus now, otherwise we're just going to be in an infinite loop. He won't do anything to me, and I keep missing him. So, I'm afraid to say, this run is a fail. Right at the freaking end of the game as well. I'm gutted. But, well, I made it this far, so you bet your ass I'm going to use the crystal just so we can murder the boss. Run's still a fail, though. Once he transforms, we can actually hit him. He does use Big Bang a couple of times, which deals pretty decent damage to me. But then he did make me laugh when he used Meteor, and it missed everybody except for Kane. But then it happens, and Zeramus dies. I know, kind of anticlimactic, huh? But, well, that's just the way these things go sometimes. I will say, though, I love how our party and friends are now basically the rulers of the entire upper world. Anyways, always a good chuckle, that is. But now, everybody, I'm afraid I need to pose two questions to you all. The first one being, did you find the hint for what the next video is? I love seeing how close some people actually get, but then never get it right. When will somebody break this chain? And the other question is, have you checked out Linktree down in the description? It's an easy one-click solution to finding all of my socials and online profiles. And I bet I'm on some platforms you didn't even know I was on. Seriously, go take a look and make sure you join our Discord server as well. We have tons of fun in there. And by fun, I mean everybody just bullies me. And of course, make sure to check out our Ko-Fi page. All the support is going to paying Daff for making these videos a reality. And once we hit the goal we have, we'll be able to hire her full time, which means even more videos for all of you guys, including new weekly series. And of course, her links are also down in the description. But in the words of the great Sid, you need to put some clothes on, merch. So go ahead and dress up in our lovely OnlyFans lineup with t-shirts and hoodies. Or even grab yourself a phone case. Until next time though, everybody, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.